Hello, I'm Dr. Charles Vollmer from the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, here today to moderate a roundtable session on the preoperative preparation selection of, of patients for pancreatic surgery. I'm pleased today to have an esteemed group with us, including Dr. Robert Martin from the University of Louisville, Dr. Michelle de Oliveira from Zurich, Switzerland, and Dr. Nigel Heaton from London, England. So, group, I'd like to start out by helping familiarize our uh, audience with just what are the things that a pancreatic surgeon does. I think there's some uh, dispute or curiosity out not only among our practitioners but also patients as to exactly what our tool set is as a pancreatic surgeon. So could each of you sort of tell us the, the conditions that you take care of on a daily basis? Yes, my practice is predominantly focused more in oncology based. Uh, just because of our group, we've separated between on benign and uh, malignant diseases. So most of my pancreatic uh, patients that I see have recent diagnosis or have suspicious diagnosis of underlying pancreatic malignancies. Michelle? Yeah, I also work in uh, a group that we deal with uh, malignant and benign uh, pancreatic tumors. And uh, constantly we are uh, dealing with uh, patients that are uh, come with the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Nigel. So I work in a large uh, hepatobiliary pancreatic unit, but we also do liver transplantation. So the unit, we're currently doing about 250 liver transplants, and we're seeing about 500 patients with pancreatic cancer each year. And we've got a rich infrastructure to deal with all aspects of pancreatic disease. My role is to perform surgery in some of those patients. So I think it's interesting that amongst us we have uh, various uh, training backgrounds and also um, active backgrounds in what we do on a daily basis. So um, very interesting for our audience to know that transplant surgeons actually do pancreatic surgery. Um, another route is oncology. Uh, I personally came from the hepatobiliary uh, side of things. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to become proficient in pancreatic surgery and uh, uh, by and large none of them is superior to the other in terms of what the final output is for patient care. Uh, I've heard a lot about cancer uh, between uh, all of you. What about uh, benign conditions of the pancreas? Do we take care of that? We do. I mean, I think obviously we we have a large unit also that again, as I said, subdivide. But there's a good, you know, an, an enriched population who have benign, both acute and chronic pancreatitis is probably the most common ones that we see. The other, I would also say, is probably the more rapidly rising diseases or concerns are the the pancreatic cysts um, in the U.S., where obviously CT scan is now becoming as ubiquitous as getting blood pressures. We're finding that patients are, find, are having a lot more diagnosis of cysts that probably are of benign nature, but clearly need to be actively managed and surveyed with someone who has that understanding of the surgical indications for pancreatic cysts. So I, I'd fully agree with that. I think there are three pillars to the practice of a pancreatic surgeon, and that is cystic disease, pancreatitis, and malignancy. And interestingly, each of them intersect. Uh, neither is exclusive to each other. Uh, and they sort of uh, make the uh, uh, quilt work for what we do on a daily basis. C could you give me an indication, uh, on the other hand, what, what you don't take care of as a uh, pancreatic surgeon in the realm of the pancreas? Because I, I can tell you personally, I have a, a rich uh, uh, referral practice that comes to me with basically anything tagged with the word pancreas on it comes in my door or can come in my door. What are the things that you think that uh, are boundaries for what we do as surgeons with the pancreas? Andrew? Uh, well, first of all, I'd just like to emphasize uh, the, the workload from pancreatic cysts. You know, it's ubiquitous now for inpatients in hospital to get scans, and the first thing that's found is a pancreatic cyst. So our workload has gone up hugely over the past few years, and I think this is a real challenge now to pick the right patients for surgery. What am I not doing? I'm not doing much in the way of gallstone disease related to the pancreas. That tends to be taken care of by general surgeons. 
and it'll only be patients with low strictures and complex problems that will, 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 will come to us. How about acute pancreatitis? Is this really something that we deal with as surgeons anymore or is it more of a medical ap approach in your institutions? So in our HPB unit in, at the University of Zurich we still deal with. So uh, all the patients that arrive at emergency with acute pancreatitis, they are uh, directly referred to us and we take care of them. So we still take care of all this uh, patient with acute pancreatitis with complication afterwards or not, surgical complication or not, they are still under our guidance. And the facts are that many of the gallstone-based problems and acute pancreatitis actually equate to surgical solutions ultimately. So we've always taken the approach of claiming these patients from the outset and um, ultimately doing the definitive ma management, whether it be short-term cholecystectomy or longer-term uh, cyst uh, processes or uh, chronic pancreatitis uh, care as well. So it's a rich field that we have, and there's all sorts of things that we can do. But I, I also would echo your, your point there about the burden of these things. But, I mean, it, just taking care of everything that comes in the door with pancreas can be an overwhelming task. And we actually find at our institutions that we have subspecializations even in our mm. HPB groups as to who does what uh, best because of the volumes that we have to deal with as well. I, I echo that. I see about four to five people a week with pancreatic cyst, the new pancreatic cyst workup as well. I, I think this is the trend now is to really super specialization within, within the field. And I think it needs that focus and, and that, that attention. Um, I think one of the things that patients often come to me and say that there's an expectation that because it's benign disease, it's somehow simpler to treat and that it's less complex and the risk should be less. And they're often surprised to find that patients with pancreatic malignancy in some ways are simpler to treat. Absolutely. And the complication rate of surgery w would appear to be lower. And the experience necessary to be good at pancreatitis surgery actually is, uh, exceeds our Often ability great. to get that experience, actually, yeah. it seems. Right. Yeah. So let me, let me shift gears a little bit and let's talk about resection uh, operations that uh, we're going to come in and actually take part of the pancreas out. So uh, I've been in a couple different practices around the country and, and seen areas, different areas of the world for this. And it's always struck me at how we have different um, qualifiers for what we would accept as a good workup for taking someone to the operating room. So uh, I'd like each of you to tell us, uh, if you're going to do a pancreatic resection uh, and that patient comes fresh to you in, in the, uh, pre -out or the outpatient clinic, what do you need to make your decisions to take someone to the operating room? Well, I, I mean, it's a, it's a long list and obviously not to, to burden uh, with too much time. And I, obviously, I think first and foremost clearly is the surgical indication that they need that. So we'll assume that they have a clear indication that a pancreatic resection is needed. And, and that one obviously is more complex. The, proof this, or high suspicion. Correct. Proof or high suspicion or an enlarging lesion that obviously has a high index of malignancy or clearly already has signs of malignancy because of how they presented either jaundice or with their, the, the actual radiologic characteristics. Second is obviously the surgical fitness. Um, I think we are continuing to expand that. And again, I echo why pancreatic surgeons and, and getting your care at, at a pancreatic surgeon, someone who specializes in pancreatic surgery is so vitally important as opposed to a surgeon who does some pancreas. It may sound some semantics, but it's vitally important because age groups are getting a lot older. We are starting to operate and do these complex operations on more older patients. And so the surgical fitness is key. And the last one, which I, I've become a little bit more uh, of a dogmatic believer of, and is obviously the image quality and making sure that the quality of imaging is of utmost importance. And, and the, the granularity of that, I think, is, is a vitally important that all pancreatic surgeons who do want to do pancreatic surgery understand that the image quality is of utmost importance, both for establishing risk of diagnosis, but more importantly, just to making sure that the surgical probability of achieving what you want to achieve in the operating room can be achieved 
Uh, if, with, poor quality sur with poor quality imaging, that sometimes is difficult. So that's sort of where I was going leading with this is um, what is the, the baseline state of the art for the, the best image you can get going into the operating room? And I, I've been faced with this and uh, coming from a different part of the country that I work in now with a referral base where I come, the patients come to me with a CAT scan in hand, but <clears throat> it's not the one we got at our institution necessarily. And um, I'm faced with the decision. Sometimes it's dated by a month or so by the time they get to the specialist. So I'm faced with decisions about doing redundant uh, uh, imaging versus getting the best quality decision making I can have. And I think we have to be worried about this in the co cost conscious world that we are, the, uh, that we have at this point in time. Anyone with a yes, comment? In, I mean, in the United Kingdom, we've got cancer networks and patients are fed through to, to regional centres such as uh, the hospital I work in. So we've tried to standardise the quality of imaging through that network. Uh, we review all of the imaging before we see the patient in clinic. So quite fortunate in that way that a multidisciplinary meeting we can assess the quality of the imaging and then say whether the patient needs additional imaging when they come to us. Uh, we use the CT as the sort of the workhorse for assessing patients. We may refine more difficult cases with MR and then endoscopic ultrasound has been a huge uh, help. I think what I'd emphasize here is the multidisciplinary team and the sort of complex working that's needed to assess these patients closely. So do each or any of you actually see your patients in that true team where you're in the same room at the same time the image is up in front of all your eyes together and you're actually filtering which doctor it goes to at that then, then and there? Or is it something on a looser basis? Uh, I think there's, there's a lot of places that espouse multidisciplinary teams but really don't have the structure or rigidity to that that others do. How, how do you work it at your place? We do, we, have a, we do have a multidisciplinary um, team and we do have what we classify as a multidisciplinary clinic now, again, because of efficiency, to make sure we don't have one patient stay in one clinic room and then rotates through four or five physicians, which is incredibly inefficient. What we try and do is we actually have clinic at the same time, um, in the same location. It may be separated by a floor or two, yep. but it's not uncommon that the patient can obviously see four doctors in the same building at the end of the day really have completed all of their workup, which I think is important. Just to echo again what Nigel said about imaging, I think it's vitally important that we understand there are two qualities to that. One is image acquisition. It's got to be of an adequate image acquisition, and there's well-established criteria as to what is a true pancreatic protocol CT scan. But just as vital to that is the pancreatic is the interpretation. And there are radiologic standards, most recently published in radiology just two years ago, of what is the verbiage that must occur. And I think it's, it behooves us that we are sort of our quality assurance. And we do, we'll call out the radiologist sometimes during this multidisciplinary conference. What is missing from this interpretation? Because it's vitally important to make sure we're getting that each and every time to make sure we're making good decisions. Are we good enough to read these images and make the right decisions as surgeons? Or do we need them as our associate, their backup, oversight, So I work in a system where, you he, he, with, where the multidisciplinary meetings are highly structured. They will issue a report at the end. There's a core group of uh, um, people who have to be there uh, through the whole panel of dis disciplines that are required to carry out pancreatic uh, care. Um, we operate the same system in terms of the clinic where the patient will be seen by one specialist. Uh, but all of the disciplines are, are represented. Okay. So I would echo that. I, I, just to say, I do believe we probably do do a better job of radiologist. And the only reason I say that is, is that sometimes we're looking at maybe five or 10 patients in a morning clinic or maybe 20 in a whole day clinic, whereas they're trying to read 30 CTs in an hour, an hour and a half. And so there's ownership for us to make sure that those surgical margins where we decide are really going to be as clean. Whereas for them, 
They're more looking at a, what I classify as a 100-foot view, where we're looking down to a one-foot view. Again, it's a road map for us, and we have, we're looking at the back roads. Yes. Right. So, uh, for example, in my, in my service, what do we do? We have this um, multidisciplinary team, and, but the patients are referred. We, see all, we receive the, the image before, and you can evaluate. We, ha we, we have the option to present and in this uh, multidisciplinary uh, team in the discussion, and we evaluate if they would need or not other image. Uh, our baseline for pancreatic cancer is not only the CT, but in Zurich we, we request for all this patient a PET CT too. So just to uh, wrap up here, it seems like we all have the, gen the general effect of a multidisciplinary process but I think we each do it in a different uh, detailed manner, ultimately. Well, thank you very much.